Today we're going to take a look at the Hasfeld Bender. Um, it's right here in the Tyler shop. You can find all of its tooling living in this uh, yellow cabinet and we have a little shuttle cart that lives next to the yellow cabinet uh, so that you can put the tooling on the cart and bring it over to the Bender more easily. Uh, there's also the manual on top of that cart. Um, one thing to think about safety-wise when using this machine is um, it's a pinch hazard. It's also a hand crushing hazard. So make sure that you, uh, especially if you're working with someone else, that everybody's hands and fingers are accounted for before you start uh, making pulls and bends in this machine. You don't want to get pinched unexpectedly. And generally only one person should be manipulating the tooling when you're setting it up or breaking it down uh, to avoid uh, fingers getting crushed. So when setting up the bender, you're going to find all of the tooling that you're going to need uh, lives in this cart. Uh, you can get the key. Um, this is normally locked up. You can get the key from the uh, tool crib. Make sure it's locked up and all the tools are put back away before you go uh, leaving at the end of your work session. And you'll see that all the drawers have shadow lines so that you can pull out just the tooling that you're going to need and make sure that it goes back um, where it's supposed to go when you're done using it. This manual is also pretty handy. Um, you can flip through and find the set different setups uh, that the machine is capable of. We only have a certain amount of tooling uh, available in this cabinet here, so we won't be able to um, duplicate all of the various operations that you'll see in the manual, but this should be a pretty good reference so that you can figure out what pins are needed for the different setups over here and what they're called. And uh, even though it reads a little bit like stereo instructions, uh, once you get a, a window into this machine, you can usually figure things out. So whenever you're setting this machine up, one of the most common uh, things we're going to start with here is bending uh, eyes in bar stock. It's page 11 in the manual. And uh, we call this the mainframe assembly and the swing arm. And uh, you use one of these center pins to attach the two. We never want to force pins in if they don't want to go in. Uh, just jiggle the machine around a little bit and make sure that um, you know nothing's in the way. There's various parts to this thing that will interfere with itself um, if you don't have it set just so. So um, you can see that I had to move a few things around down at the bottom there to get that pin to drop in. Uh, no need to go whacking things with a hammer. In fact, uh, just try to avoid that. So now you can see that this uh, swing arm can swing around freely uh, around this center pivot point. So I'll show you how to use the uh, bender to set up for the bending eyes in light bar stock. Uh, so right here we've got all the various pins that you're going to need for this setup. So after getting the swing arm attached with the uh, center pin uh, of your choosing, you can uh, decide which one of these different U-pins that you'll want. Um, this one will allow you to get a little closer to your center pin and this one here will set you a little further back, but it also uh, allows you to use this little roller so that you can roll stock in, feed stock in a little more predictably. Uh, the next setup you'll need is some kind of offset pin, uh, and you can see that there's two different styles here. This one's a little more offset than the other, meaning that top uh, portion of it is sort of kinked over a little further. Um, on this one than it is on this one. Uh, I tend to prefer the one that's um, offset a little further. Uh, I'm going to set it in this position for now. Uh, and then we're going to take our uh, pusher die here, thread this nut on like so, and we'll just sort of get it in there as far as we feel like we need for the time being. And then we get this uh, sort of circular eye pin that just sort of fits on there loosely on the end and uh, we'll just drop it on over these other pins as so. And the idea is that you'd feed in a piece of bar stock here and then you can bend that material uh, around that center pin using this setup. Depending on the size of the part uh, that you're trying to bend or the radius you're trying to bend around, you may adjust where these sit, uh, hence the adjustability here uh, and the fact that you can move these around uh, along this swing arm assembly. And the same thing with this, you can always switch back over to this one if you need a little uh, um, you know, tighter um, fit between your center pin and this stationary pin. So here I've got a piece of um, 
just 5 16 round bar, cold rolled, mild steel. Uh, and I'd like to do um, like a little eye, uh, eye hook on the end of this thing. Um, and so I'm gonna adjust this pusher uh, until it pinches up here, but there's not a whole lot of space. You wanna be as close, uh, in order to get a complete eye, you wanna be as close to the end as, as you feel comfortable with, but you don't wanna be so close that you'll slip off the end. And uh, I can also see that I've got a lot of distance here between that pin and this pin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch this up a little bit and I'm gonna move this guy a little further forward and that will help me um, you know, support the end of this uh, tooling a little bit better. Um, now I should be able to feed that in uh, a little bit closer. Another thing I'm noticing is I'm really close to the shoulder on this center pin, so I want to raise that center pin and have it stay in that position. And so what I'll do is I'll swing this bottom arm uh, over a bit until uh, the center pin uh, is seated. So it's just this, uh, this little bent piece of metal down at the bottom there in order to keep that bin, uh, pin up like that. So now that, that feels a little bit better. Um, and now if I give myself a little bit of a land on this tooling, I'm as far over as, as I want to you know, be over there. Um, now I feel like I've got a, a tight enough uh, grab on this thing that I can pull that uh, material around and, uh, and get a good bend. All right, so now I'm able to pull this material around that center pin uh, as far as the machine will allow, and that's about it there. Um, once it is bent, and I, if I want to center that eye up, I'll flip it around here, um, and you can usually uh, readjust your setting here, and then try and get a good bite somewhere along the center line of that radius. And so I may want to open up a little bit here and you can usually center that eye. Uh, and if you need to make a few adjustments, uh, you can until it's tweaked just the way you'd like it. Uh, and so there you have um, an eye bent on the uh, on the top frame here. This is again a 5 16 round bar. It'll work in uh, about the material this size square round um, lighter gauge material. So let's say we want to bend uh, you know a more uh, larger radius around a piece of material uh, but this center pin um, is a little too narrow for you. We have a few different options. Um, we have these various uh, other dies here or tools that you can put over this center pin. But notice that this cam uh, die here, this um, center one, will fit over the um, the three-quarter inch center pin just fine. Uh, however, this one here won't slip over. Um, and so what you're going to want to do is uh, flip around if you want to use this one anyway with the um, smaller inner diameter ID will flip around this center pin uh, so that it has, um, as you can see, the other side of it will um, accept that smaller, I believe it's a 5 8 inch pin for that 5 8 inch ID here. And so we'll just flip around this center pin and then we'll adjust that, um, that this little piece of sheet metal here um, so that the pin will sit at a lower position and so it may take a little bit of fussing um, initially but um, with a little bit of wiggling you'll be able to get it to sit um, a bit lower and now you can see that uh, we're a, a good bit further down um, and much closer to the uh, surface of the um, bender there. Now that way we can drop this guy on like so and bend around, uh, bend around it. But we can also see that now our um, pusher is a little too close to accept this material. We'll just make another adjustment um, by bringing this pin back and we'll do the same with this one. And uh, now we've got enough uh, room to uh, to make those bends uh, happen around this larger radius block. So it's important to make sure that your material is uh, you know snugly in place there. So when you're inserting the material, uh, 
be sure to orient the bend so I have this eye on the other end of this part that I want to um, say keep perpendicular to this next bend so I'm going to make sure that that's nice and perpendicular I'm making sure that I'm flat on this surface here uh, for the uh, stationary bender that'll give me a good reference making sure that my die is uh, firmly uh, down in place here via that center pin in the right location and then I'll snug this guy up like so and then um, when everything looks good I can feed this um, bend along until um, I've got this hook about where I'd like it to be. Uh, and so now I've got that, um, that hook um, figured out uh, fairly well. Uh, might need a little bit of straightening down the line. It's a little out of whack, but nothing that you couldn't fix by putting in a vise and grabbing this end with a wrench and giving it a little twist here and there. So um, if you take your time and, uh, and reference the different edges you uh, do and make sure that you clean up the ends of your bar stock before you go uh, bending these shapes, um, it'll save yourself a whole lot of time if you're making simple little eye hooks, S hooks, and all kinds of different, different shapes. So with a little time and patience, you'll be able to get uh, the results you're looking for using this eye bolt bending setup. In another video I have uh, already produced, you can see how to use this uh, eye bolt bending setup to do accurate bends, predictable bends in light round bar stock. Same stuff I was using in this, in this video. Uh, when you're done, make sure that you take all the tooling, uh, no matter what setup you were using, and uh, carefully put it back into the yellow cabinet uh, where it belongs in the various drawers and shelves so that it doesn't get lost or mistaken for scrap metal around the metal shop. Uh, it's important that we have all this tooling uh, back in the cabinet when we're done. Uh, this tooling can be rather expensive to replace if it's lost or mishandled. So, and when you're done, uh, make sure that the cabinet is all locked up and, uh, and secured safely and the key back in the tool crib with the monitor. Uh, so make sure to work safely, uh, observe all the safety rules in the shop, and uh, of course check in with the, uh, the monitor and your instructor before using any tools, and uh, good luck.